Good evening, Prescott Valley. Welcome to your Parks and Recreation Commission normal meeting. I'll call the meeting to order and uh, roll call, please, Kathy. Chairperson Pierce. I am here. Commissioner Gorman. Here. Commissioner Cabato. Here. Commissioner Peterson. Here. All right, we do have quorum. So uh, we'll move to the agenda. Any uh, additions or changes to the agenda? Hearing none, I would call for approval to the agenda. I make a motion we approve the agenda. I second it. In favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Thank you. Minutes from our last meeting on October 12th are in front of us. Look through them, Kathy. They look good to me. <laughs> Corrections, changes, additions. Hearing none, I would uh, take a motion to approve the minutes as submitted. I'll make a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. All right, thank you. Item five, schedule announcements. I'll be good to see you. You're back on your feet and going strong. Back in here, ready to go. Missed you guys last month, so good evening, commissioners. Very nice to see you guys. Um, for uh, item 5A, I uh, wanted to kick it off with our program and class report. Uh, for October, uh, activities and sessions offered. Uh, activities, we had 11 total. Uh, sessions, 27, and still running strong with eight different instructors. Uh, our top program, uh, 50 plus total body conditioning with 232 participants. Uh, Mia does a fantastic job with that program. Um, everybody that takes that class is very happy with it. So if people out there in the community have not taken advantage of it, I definitely recommend it. Um, held where, Bobby? What's that? Where is that held? That is held over at the Boys and Girls Club Gymnasium. We have a lot of our classes over there, don't we? Or? We do. Uh, we, we host some of them. Um, there are three classes currently that go on over there, uh, two martial arts classes and then the total body conditioning. Okay. Um, and then we also run, you know, like volleyball and things like that out of the gym as well. Okay. Uh, participation by age, uh, we had 395 participants over the month. Our zero to five age range encompassed 4.1%. Six to 11 year olds was 26.8. 12 to 17, we had 9.3%. And the 18 to 49, 17.5. Uh, and a uh, big chunk of our participation with the 50 plus demographic, uh, the 42.3%. So people are getting out there, people are wrecking and enjoying our activities. So love to see it. Um, moving on to our aquatics update. Uh, Bradshaw Mountain High School swim team continued their season at our facility, Mountain Valley Splash, through the month of October. Uh, last day was October 29th. Um, I heard that they weren't able to make it to state this year. So nonetheless, we really enjoy supporting the team and obviously the community for that. So we wish the kids uh, a better luck next year and making it to state. But nonetheless, we're really proud of them and, and all the hard work they put in over their season. Uh, another uh, project that we did over the course of October was the uh, splash pad resurfacing. Um, obviously with how bad it is, you can see the before pictures uh, over there on your right hand side. During us uh, tearing it up, it, it pretty much had no glue left on it. So there were a lot of spots that we were able to just pull it up, which is really bad. We don't like seeing that. Um, during our resurfacing, as you can see over there on your left-hand side, uh, the company is out there and they're putting down the new Aquaflex product. Um, and then your after uh, picture down there on the left and then your side-by-side -side comparison of the then and now. Looks uh, good, looks it, very good. It looks really amazing. That, that Aquaflex product, um, we're really happy that we were able to you know, afford to make that happen and this should be another one that, that gives us at least another eight years. That is the replacement um, life cycle on it. So it, it's a nice product. I'm very happy with how it worked out. All of our staff over at the pool pitched in to rip out the other surface and now, this is what we have out there for next year's season that will happen in May. 
Uh, moving on to our uh, adult sports update um, with uh, tournaments coming to an end, uh, the seasons winding down and things of that nature uh, with tournaments and athletics. Just wanted to make sure that we touched on this because with all the, the support with our recreation staff as well as our parks maintenance staff, a lot goes into this and uh, with the athletic season Ending, uh, we supported 14 youth and adult sports tournaments encompassing youth base baseball and softball, youth soccer, youth football, uh, college soccer, and then uh, as well as those tournaments, we also, you know, did our rec softball league. So a lot goes into our fields over the course of the year, tournament-wise, practice-wise, and just wanted to say a big shout out to all of our staff. They do a fantastic job. As you can see, the amphitheater in this picture looks amazing, mowed, manicured, and and uh, we love bringing that type of uh, amenity to our community. Uh, for the athletics, uh, the field count, uh, I'm sorry, field and court rentals, uh, we had 261 over the course of October. Um, so touching on how much usage we get. Uh, at Quellwood Park, 1.7% of our rentals. Santa Fe Station, 6.8. Uh, Viewpoint uh, took 9.2. Antelope Park is 4.4. Bob Edwards got 13.3. And then with the overwhelming majority of the percentage, and I'm sorry you can't see it in the slide, that's actually Mountain Valley Park. So sorry about that clerical error on our part. And then we also wrapped up our fall softball league and we just wanted to say a, a big shout out to our league winners. Uh, you can see the co-ed league winners and then also the men's league winner right there in the middle picture. So always a great season. Our, our community really supports our recreational activities and we love being able to put it on for them. So shout outs to them. Great job everybody. We'll see you again in the spring. Uh, for our outdoor education social media update, uh, we had 4,283 individual Facebook reach, um, 9,496 total Facebook reach for the month, um, 55 new Facebook followers, 75 new Instagram reach, and 20, <clears throat> 20 new Instagram followers. Uh, so making sure we get it out there on social media, we all know that that's a huge advertising market, and, and seeing that our social media Media is getting more response, more people following us, and, and that's something that Laura has been doing a fantastic job on. Um, we'll continue to push that and continue reaching our community as best we can with that social media. Okay. Uh, moving on to our special events update, Haunting on the Green. I'm not sure if all of the commissioners were able to be at the event. Estimated attendance was 800. As you can see in the photo in the middle, um, we have the Very Avengers uh, at our costume contest. It, it was a fantastic event. Uh, bounce house, we had pony rides, we had the Headless Horseman out there on a horse, uh, partnered with PD to do the bike rodeo out there as well. We had crafts. So uh, Elise and all of the coordinators put a lot of great work into this. And with that partnership with PD, I think they really knocked it out of the park. I've had nothing but great responses from the community. So it was an awesome event. And from some of these other pictures, you can see we had some really awesome costumes. And uh, that's just another prime example of a fantastic event that Parks and Recreation brings to the community. So who's the headless pumpkin head? The Headless Horseman? <laughs> he, <laughs> well, here's that pumpkin there. <laughs> <laughs> that is the Headless Horseman, and oh. he was awesome to have out there. We hope to have him again next year. I bet he was very popular. <laughs> he was. He definitely was. You should have seen some of the great just selfie ops, and then also, you know, parents taking the kid up to actually pet the horse and then get a picture with the Headless Horseman. So all the active and passive recreation within this event was awesome. It sounds like it was really good. It was very good. We had a good time. Good. <clears throat> Uh, for our upcoming events, the 20th annual Create a Tree, with, which will take place here in the library, uh, which will be uh, lit not only trees, but also wreaths. The, uh, we're now accepting applications. Those will go to Colleen, our arts and culture coordinator. Um, and then once we're done with the application process, she will contact the local businesses, companies, and, and people like that that want to go ahead and bring those in. Um, awesome events, I definitely recommend people come in it really gets you know holiday spirit here around the library we have a good time with it 
Uh, in addition to that, Pictures with Santa will be coming up on Friday, December the 3rd, and we will be taking those photos uh, from 6.30 to 9, which is when Santa will need to leave. So uh, hopefully we'll get a bunch of people out here, make sure they get that uh, photo opportunity. Where with is the, that at? That'll be here in the library in the Crystal Room. Um, and we're working out some of the other little details right now, but just wanted to note it since we won't be having a, a meeting in December. But Is this going to be, will this cost? There no nope, a completely free? free event, just like our <clears throat> just like our haunting on the green. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we try to provide as much as we can. We want to make sure we can, you know, impact as many of our community members as possible. Oh, that's great. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and then one of our other events that we will be having coming up, uh, Polar Bear Splash, that's going to be taking place on January the 8th at uh, Mountain Valley Splash, 8600 East Nace Lane. Um, that will be in 2022, but uh, wanted to make sure we got it out there for the folks at home watching so they know it's coming up. Uh, working out the last minute details for that one as well since we're a little ways out, but uh, right now we have it scheduled from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, time could change, but just wanted to make sure we noted that and the event will be coming. Make sure that you tell your friends, polar bears that are looking to jump in, it'll happen. We'll have some great prizes. It'll be a good time again. Bob, just to uh, remind the public, um, What's the best way for them if they're interested in signing up for some of the classes or things that are going on this winter, like that fitness program, where would they sign up and of course. Uh, if they head to our website and sign up through our online registration system, which is uh, REC1, if you go to P pvaz.net, uh, you'll be able to find where you can sign up for classes just by yourself, or you can always give us a call at 759-3090. Uh, staff is always ready and willing to help, and uh, if you're looking to just run through it your first time, we can talk you through it or get you registered, and then from there, you can take it and do it all by yourself. Great. You pay online also. Right? Yes, ma'am. You can pay by credit card or debit card. What if someone doesn't want to pay that way? Can they come in person and pay? They can. They can absolutely. The class? They, so they can come into some of the classes. It's dependent on the class and how the class is set up. If there is a, a drop-in for the class, mm -hmm. um, then they can do it that way. Um, we do recommend doing it you know, online now. It is a little bit easier for both us and the instructors, right. but we, we make it easy for anybody who wants to take a class, and then we can get them taken care of. Great. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Yes, sir. Department update. For review or possible action, we got the chairperson's report. The chairperson doesn't really have <laughs> much to report this evening. I did actually meet with the town manager earlier today. Very good. Um, he was talking with me about teamwork and leadership, that type of thing. Yeah. So we'll uh, see where that goes. But okay. uh, other than that, my tree advisory board is still weak. Yeah. We have one memorial tree planted in Antelope Park. Correct, yes. Just one tree planted over this last month. We are getting a little bit cooler out there, so um, only one going in, but uh, obviously the month before we had four. Um, just wanted to make sure we noted that. That's that's always a good thing, and obviously with us being Tree City USA and getting the growth award and always trying to get that every single year. Um, just wanted to mention it during our meeting, let you guys know that it's still available. Memorial Street Memorial Tree Program is still thriving, and when community members are interested in it, they can always contact us, and we can run them through what the program entails and different locations that we have to offer for them to plant a tree. Great. Perfect. Excellent. All right. Any old business? I don't have any on the agenda. New business, pickleball courts at Antelope. Yes, sir. So we had to bring this under new business. Um, we had talked about this back in, I want to say, August, and things had changed a little bit. So we're bringing it back to you, letting you know that we're going to council for a different company um, since the uh, schedule as well as the funding had changed up a little bit and we had also changed up the size of our pickleball courts to su suit more of what the community was asking for. Um, so with the proposed diff funding for fiscal year 21-22, uh, it's going to allow us, uh, the community services department, the ability to install eight additional pickleball courts at Antelope Park. Uh, the pickleball courts now will be 68 feet wide by 128 feet long. So two separate pads that will 
house four courts each. They will be lit, fully fenced, and you'll be able to access each individual court from the exterior gate. Um, and we will also have uh, fencing in the middle of each of the courts to help to separate for some of the safety pieces and then also to make it uh, more of a tournament type of setup. Um, with Antelope Park being amazing, as we all know, ample parking, great area, great location, restrooms, ramadas, and also now a new spray pad out there. Um, it, it was an ideal location for where we we're going to put it. Um, as you can tell, the orange dots are going to be uh, some of the lighting and different poles that are going to be going in there. And then the blue is showing you your fenced in areas on the uh, interior of it. Uh, exterior is going to be an eight foot tall chain link fence uh, with a four foot on the interior. Um, and we'll have 24 total new light poles in there, 22 foot tall. And with it being, you know, around a community area near kind of some houses. Um, the light review of it, the light pollution will not be going into a resident's home, but we will be letting people know that are right there around the new courts that the construction will be happening. It will be lit just to make sure they know before construction happens. That schedule for this winter to be done, or yes. So we're we're scheduling it right now. Uh, as long as council is able to approve it on uh, Thursday of next week, then we should be breaking ground and getting going on that in January. So then oh. should be completed by March, and then weather is going to be amazing out there, so yeah. community can use it. Perfect. Everybody loves pickleball. They well, really maybe do. Maybe not everybody, but it's very popular. <laughs> it is huge sport around the whole nation, and we know we got a large following here in Prescott Valley as well. So we're, we're happy that we were able to spend some diff funding on a project like this because it's something else that we needed. Good. Good, good, good. Mm -hmm. All right, and then uh, lights at the lake, uh, item B. Uh, our parks maintenance division is currently working on this project and we're hoping to have it done. So to coincide with uh, the Civic Center lighting, the light parade and everything that will be happening on December the 4th, we'll also be lighting up the urban forest this year. Uh, with our holiday light display at the park, uh, this will be the first year with plans to uh, involve focusing on the Lakeshore right of Way, along with in between both the lakes and the parking lot. Uh, in those red areas, it's showing trees and things of that nature that we will be hanging lights on. And uh, we're, we're really excited for what it's going to look like. Uh, we think it's going to be another really nice addition to what the, the town and the community really wants to see. So once it's completed, you'll be able to walk through a winter wonderland at the urban forest uh, for the holiday wow. season. That'll be nice. This is a whole new adventure. This is. It's a brand new adventure. With us getting the capital project money to, to get this in this year, uh, we did our electrical upgrades uh, last week. And then with the purchase of all new lights and things like that, they're, the guys are out there hanging them this week. And we will see the finished product December the 3rd. Okay. And then we still have uh, Fane Park all. We do, yes, ma'am. The Valley, or yes, the Valley of Lights right, that will right, be right. taking place as well, and then the Civic Center lights. It will be very festive around the community yeah. for this holiday season. Uh, Bob, will those lights be uh, turned off at like 10 p.m. or are they? I'm just wondering for the public. Yeah. Uh, what, when would they expect those to be lit? to and from so they will be on a timer so you know whenever uh whenever they're ready to come on we'll have them on and then whenever we need to have them turned off photo cell things of that nature we haven't decided exactly when it'll be turned off it may be on all night with the other lights around the park and things like that it shouldn't really interrupt anyone else and still be dark sky ordinance um so we will have to evaluate once we're able to get them turned on tested and check everything out well, you have to keep him on Christmas Eve all exactly. night, you know, for it Santa has Claus to, to find, yeah. hmm. find his that, way here. That is the plan currently. Okay. Yeah, I guess I would caution the public to be sure if they're pulling off of Lakeshore Drive there, they need to get completely off of the pavement there. Yes. So they're not blocking traffic. I can see where we might have a little bit of of course parking issue <laughs> we love photo opportunities we want to see people posting on social media and enjoying what we're doing out there in the park we do have the parking lot but bill you make a great point caution yourself make sure you get completely off that shoulder before you get out of your vehicle and then uh, enjoy some pictures a nice little stroll through the park and uh, we're really excited to get that completed yeah i'm looking forward to walking that perfect 
director's report. There she is. Mm -hmm. uh, I, Pete said we were going to go fast. I, I, I guess he has a date. I don't all know. All right. All right. Football. What is this? Tuesday. All right. First of all, I just have to say how amazing our recreation staff is. They're very young, some very inexperienced, but they have worked hard the last couple of months to really get us going. Um, bless you. And uh, I, I just couldn't be more proud of how they put their heart and soul into kind of picking up the slack because we're so short staffed right now. So um, kudos to them and Bobby with his leadership um, and Elise too. So. Um, the other thing I want to uh, talk about is uh, last week, all of us went down to uh, the Weeklepaw Resort Casino. It was at the Fort McDowell, Fort McDowell Casino a Resort Center for the Arizona State um, uh, Parks and Recreation Association Conference. So Bobby, Elise, uh, Colleen, Laura, and Cecily and I went down. And it's, it was a three-day uh, conference that uh, help, helps parks and recreation professionals develop. Um, there's all sorts of sessions on, I mean, from for the park staff, for recreation staff, for directors, leadership, management. It was an amazing conference. And I've been to a lot of conferences. This was my very first parks and recreation conference. Mm -hmm. So I got to tell you, I found my people. They're amazing. They're like, li a lot of librarians can be a little, little reserved. Well, you guys know me, I'm not. So it was yeah. interesting. They're like, I can't believe you're a library, library person. You're so loud. And I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> you have to fit in with But it was it was a really great conference. We did some great networking. Um, uh, the the uh, staff were, were able to attend sessions, and we're going to talk tomorrow and uh, do a debrief on, okay, you went to these sessions, now what can we do to integrate what you have learned into what we're doing here? So um, Bobby and I are really excited to talk to staff tomorrow to see what their ideas are and how we can, again, always better ourselves. So, so what did you learn? So, so I went to some amazing sessions. Um, I have all my notes. You just caught me off guard now. I'm um, sorry. No, 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 well, no. What no. was your favorite thing? Um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm going to go to my notes real quick. Okay. Just because. This is what I always ask my grandkids yes, when they I when they do it. something really neat. No, then. that's. What was your favorite thing? There was one with Annie Frizzoli, and she's a consultant, and um, she. Uh, it was becoming, it was about being personable with people and getting in, um, uh, um, I can't even think of the word right now. Hold on. I'm going to get there. I will okay. get there. There we, it is. We have time. There it is. Um, da -da -da. Becoming passionately curious about people. Oh. Um, and without being nosy. Yeah. Okay. And she just talked about how, you know, like, said, so how was your weekend? You know, oh, great. How was yours? Oh, it was good. What was your favorite thing you did this weekend? So it starts those conversations and it starts an investment in your staff that you care about what they have to say. And a lot of it, too, and I find myself doing this, is um, when you start you know, somebody's talking to you, you're like, oh, I, gotta, I, I can't wait to tell them about this. And you're not listening. So, of course, there's the act of listening. So, sometimes I get, I'm like 10 steps ahead of somebody and I've just missed, you know, a minute of what they said because I'm ready to, to respond to what they said a couple minutes ago. So, it's about making that eye contact and just listening to what the person has to say. Um, you miss a lot of what people say when you're, you know, thinking about what you, how you want to respond. So that was a, a big lesson for me with one of them. And I'm, I'm reaching out to Annie to see if she can uh, do a workshop for our Parks and Rec staff because she was amazing. I really, really liked her. Yeah, that's, I think we all could do that because I, I know I do that also. I can't wait to say what I think. Yep. Instead of listening to what they think. Yes. So it's yeah. an art. And it is. It really skill. is. And let's see, I'm interrupting you. So, well, no, good. I mean, this is great. This is great. You're going to enhance your people. Casey. Yeah. Yes, sir. Did they have people from the national organization? Um, that spoke? I don't. Did. Yeah. Now I forgot where I was at. There it is. There we go. So, yeah, so that conference was really beneficial, I think, to all of us, and also some teamwork, too, um, and cohesiveness. So we had all, what's great, one of the companies had a, a barbecue and music for everyone and to showcase one of their nice new soccer, what was that, a soccer? A shot pit. 
So it's a shot pit, so it's a smaller soccer field that's concrete, so it's just shot on goals. So you don't wreck your field and your grass all the time, just making shots on goals, which we have in Bob Edwards and some of our other parks. So it was really nice, really expensive, and it was in Fountain Hills, but it was, you know, it was nice to see those, those things that other in cities and municipalities can afford, so. Um, the big thing I wanna talk about tonight is, um, you know, we are now, uh, starting January, uh, we will now, we will be a merged commission, Parks, Arts, and Recreation. So the first meeting um, will be a work study, which will be t Tuesday, January 11th, and Kathy will send all that information out to you, and we'll make sure you have it. And that's gonna be up in the Crystal Room. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come together as this new commission, and we're gonna just talk about how, how we wanna work together. How do we want to uh, be a cohesive group that works with parks arts and recreation um, there are questions about you know well um, how can we cohesively work together as one commission and so those are some of the things that we're going to talk about then uh, and inc including new format how we want the agenda um, we we're talking about instead of us talking to you constantly you know just we're talking at you sometimes um, Maybe, and this is a good decision you'll have to make too, is if you want to have your meetings in the crystal room from here on out so that it's more of an informal discussion. Um, it creates, uh, I think, a, uh, a better uh, discussion, really. Will we have a microphone? No, it would be in the crystal room. So it's, Yay. we're all together. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah. <laughs> so that's just something that, you know, we'll discuss. It does discuss. make it more relaxed. Yes, I think it's more relaxed. Something like that. Um, informal, but yet, you know, we still have, you know, we still have our agenda and things gotcha. that we need to follow. Gotcha. So. I've never been there. Crystal, crystal room's room. upstairs, right above Tables us. Tables and chairs. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. table and chairs. Has a kitchen. Yeah, oh, okay. we can have coffee. Um, we also, you know, we want to make sure the format of the meeting is um, uh, it, we get to the meat of the issues because we'll have parks, arts, and recreation. So we'll have Bobby, myself, and Colleen, who's our arts coordinator. Um, so we just want to make sure that we all have, you know, there may be meetings that we focus more heavily on parks, or there may be meetings where we focus more on arts. So it, it just depends on what's going on. Uh, but we want to make the, u the best use of everyone's time. Make sense? So we'll still have the meetings. So we'll have a, a reg so work study is January 11th. Regular meeting will be January 18th. And then we're back to um, the second Tuesday of the month, which would be February 8th. Oh, okay. So and we'll send, not... we'll send all of that to you. So this so, is the, the work study. Yes. And then the 18th will be the regular meeting. Yes. So we hope that all of you can be at the work study. I think yeah. it's very important that you have a voice. Is it going to be the same time? Yes, yeah, so it'll be at 5.30. Yeah. Okay. 5.30. So, okay. Um, so and again, I just want to uh, rehash, you know, December 3rd, we have the Holiday Festival Lights Parade, um, where we had, that's also when we had the photos with Santa. Um, we have staff working that, also with our parks crew is usually out there deflecting traffic. Um, and December 11th, we have the unveiling of the Flora and Fauna statue um, out on the south, north, north, east corner. South. Southeast corner. <laughs> there's a corner over there, and there's going to be a statue <laughs> right in front of PD on the corner there. Okay. Um, uh, and so we'll have the unveiling. I think that's still at 10, 10 a.m. So it'll just be. I, I think it'll be great to just, you know, with all the holidays here, we're unveiling what, another December statue. December what? December 11th. I'm sorry. So that will be really nice. And of course our New Year's Eve, which is December 31st, 5.30 to 8.30, we're still working out the details. This year we're only having one fireworks show at 8.30, um, so that will be really nice too. And of course our polar bear splash, um, we're working out the details. We're hoping to have a pancake breakfast. I love pancakes. And uh, maybe the whole recreation team will jump in there for some team building. What do you think, Bobby? Like it? Like it. Yeah, let's do it. I'm in. I'm in. Commissioner, have that team building in the water. Huh? Yeah, in the cold water. I'll be watching. <laughs> no, no, they'll all be Come on, there. Pete. Uh, they'll all be there. And that's all I have. Any questions, comments? 
Well, it sounds good. It All sounds right. like something to look forward to. Yeah, thank you. I, I look forward to our new direction in, in 2022. Yeah, it'll so. be different. I, I'm looking forward to it also. Awesome. All right, that's all I have, commissioners. Thank you very much. Appreciate right, thank you. Thank you. All right, and seeing no unscheduled public appearances. Nope. We now know when the next couple of meetings are, and uh, I will adjourn the meeting. Okay. Thank you. I'll second it. Prescott Valley. <laughs>